Hey, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Yes, Santa has shaved off his beard. It is New Year's Eve and I am so ready for 2022. I have so many awesome projects and tutorials lined up for all my subscribers on the 3D Print Farm. Today we are going to delve into episode two of a series of videos to hopefully spark some ideas to get the most out of your desktop or fiber laser and help you make some extra cash. Today we're going to dive into the deep dark world of patent illustrations and drawings. Show you how you can take these patent illustrations and drawings, chop them up, manipulate them around and make cool stuff like this. Canvas! Drink containers, drink containers, coasters, you name it, and potentially make some cash. So before you beat me up on this topic, I have researched this from top to bottom, and the general consensus is that patent and illustration drawings that are filed with the U.S. Patent Office are considered public domain and can be freely used unless caveat, unless there is an associated copyright attached. Now, I'm not an attorney, but I wish to issue this disclaimer. Hello, makers. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, will be to take patent art and burn it into something cool. As always, should any of you or your team be caught or sued, 3D Print Farm will disavow any knowledge of your actions. Good luck, Maker. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. So that's right, I am going to teach you a super easy way using just one program to create this awesome patent artwork using just one program. Let's get started. Okay, head on over to your favorite browser, click in the search box and type in patent drawings. Patent drawings. And over here in the top, click on images. There are literally hundreds of thousands of patent drawings. As you can see here, it covers almost every subject from science to toys to electronics. Uh, in fact, that looks like a slinky. It, is, it does look like a slinky. So yeah, it's uh, uh, that's that's really kind of cool. I mean, that's a cool that's a cool drawing. Uh, look at some of these other items in here. I mean, some of these things are just bizarre, wacky. There's a there's a mouse trap. So, but today we are going to be dealing with, I have no idea what that is. Is that a diaper for a donkey? Cat maybe? Dog? I don't know. Uh, but we're going to be dealing with firearm patents. We're going to become a firearm dealer. No, that's, that's, that doesn't sound right. We're going to be dealing with firearms today. Uh, so, the one that I chose was the AR-15 or M16 style rifle, and uh, it looks like, what have we got here? All kinds of cool stuff, Winchester, Colt 45, yeah, this looks like something similar that we are going to use. So, yes, this is, is the firearm having an auxiliary bolt closure mechanism which looks like this is the forward assist on an AR-15 so that's a really cool drawing it so looks like it was patented in 1966 so what I need to do is I need to grab this number here this number is the patent from the United States Patent Office and the easiest way to get to this, instead of having to navigate through all of the rigmarole and jump through all kinds of hoops to go to the Patent Office website, is you can go to your friendly Google browser and type in patents.google.com. And I bet you didn't know that Google has its own patent browser. So all I need to do is, if I can remember these numbers here, help me remember guys, 
three two three six one five five. So three two three two three six one five five. And I got the little intelligence going on here. Here it is. Uh, firearm having an auxiliary bolt closure mechanism. And I click on that, and voila. We have the Google patent that was pulled up. This is the US 3236155A in the United States, issued on, actually, it was filed by Colt July 8th, 1964. And all we have to do is click on any of these images over here, and you'll see it pops up the image. You could look at each of them in the browser here and what I want to do is I want to grab this one in particular because this one looks familiar right this was from our canvas that uh, we showed earlier I need to go up here and click on this square that has the little arrow and what that's going to do is that is going to pull the item up or pull the page up in my browser and as you can see up in the URL the address bar here that this is a PNG file which is good for us because these PNG files from the patents office are transparent so what I need to do is I need to right click click save image as and as you can see it's going to save it as a PNG and you can see I've saved lots of copies of the M16 up in here so I'm just gonna call this M16 underscore three all right and that's all you, there is to it and again you can do that with any any patent and what I would suggest is go out and do a Google search find the image that you like now you may not find everything and so in the the way the patent search works it's a little squirrely. I mean, you can't type in something like, let's say, transformers in here. Trans transformers. And you see, so now it's going to pull up all kinds of, okay, then it's not looking for the transformer toy, so it's looking for like an electrical transformer. So let's say I typed in transformer toy. Well, there's one there, transformer toy with rolling vehicle integrated into command center. Yeah, that's that's kind of a cool that's kind of a cool um, design there, uh, but yeah, I you know I mean that's one of those things where it would be it's kind of nice to go out here and look for the actual picture of the item. This gives you kind of a better idea. That way you don't have to hunt and peck. But again, you is if you find a picture that you like, you pretty much can click on it, and the patent number is going to be listed up in here. So all you do is just jot that down, go over to patents.google.com and type in that patent number and you will be greeted with something that looks like this. And again, these images are all PNG files. All you have to do is click again the square with the arrow, it pulls it open, right click, save image as, and as you can see it is the glorious transparent PNG file. So let's bounce over into Lightburn. All right, now I am into Lightburn. I need to import this object or this PNG into Lightburn. So I click File, Import, or click Control i on your keyboard as a shortcut. I'm gonna go in here and grab our M16 underscore two. And as you can see, I have imported this PNG into Lightburn. Now let's take our magnifying glass and take a really, really close look at our PNG. Now look at all this zigzaggy garbage. You do not want this in your burn file because it is, it is gonna look like crap, especially if you have to resize any of this. Uh, it, it's it's not going to look right. Trust me. So what we want to do is we want to take this, we want to convert this into an SVG, a scalable vector graphic that we can manipulate at a later time, or move it into Illustrator or Inkscape or whatever program that you have that is a vector program and make manipulations. But now we're going to do all of this within Lightburn. We're going to not even look at those other programs. We're going to do all this within Lightburn. So here we go. Make sure that your image is selected. 
when I select my image, you can see these little squares around it and the little dancing ants that are around the object. That's to show you that it is selected. I want to go over here to Tools and I want to select Trace Image. What it's going to do is it's going to open up a preview window. Now, hot pink is good. Hot pink in spandex is not good, but hot pink with your image here is good. So we're going to leave everything alone because if we make changes to this cutoff, as you can see, it goes from hot pink to black and white. Hot pink is good. Okay, click the OK button. Now, it doesn't look like it's done anything, but as I click this image and oh, check that out, is that gorgeous vector graphic or it, the image has been traced. So we don't need two M16s on the on the uh, desktop, so we're going to get rid of this one. So this is our transparent image, and if I click off of it and zoom in, check that out of all those smooth, non-zigzaggy lines, you could take this image, blow it up to the size of the side of a building, and it would not lose resolution. And that's what the cool thing about scalable vector graphics are. You can blow them up any size you want, shrink them down any size you want. They're not going to lose any resolution like a JPEG or a PNG. Well, we are not done with this file because, again, this was filed back in 1964. And as you can see, that looks like a part of a fingerprint on here. It has all these little dots of dust and smudges, and there's this looks like something from a copier line. We need to get rid of all of this stuff to make sure that our image is nice and clean for the laser. So what you want to do is you want to go over here and click your select tool. Click your select tool, hold your left mouse button in, and click and drag around the object, okay? Wait a minute, it's not doing anything. Well, you know why? It's because this object is it is looking at this object as one physical piece. We can't select any of the individual items in this drawing. Why is that? Well, it's because they are grouped together as one object. So we need to split them apart. The idea is you click your object, right click, select ungroup. Now everything is broken up into teeny tiny little pieces, okay? All like my M16 up here is just little bits of vector graphic. That's going to help us now because now we can get rid of all this gunk down here at the bottom. So we're gonna select this. I'm gonna click my delete key and look, that is gone, gone. Now I'm gonna go up here. I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna undo that. Didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna drag around here and looks like all these little dust specks here. All of those need to go away. I need to make that go away. All this stuff up here, those fingerprints, I need that to go away. It looks like there's another dot over here. That to go away. Looks like there's some items down below here. All these little specks. Again, all I'm doing is clicking my select tool, holding my left mouse button in, and clicking and dragging. And you can see there's been selected. You can do this individually as well. Get in there tight, get everything out. And so now our image looks like, oh, there's a couple there, I thought I missed them. All right, so now our image looks like it is cleaned up. Here, there may be one or two spots that I missed. Is there one there? Yep, and one there, okay. So now what we wanna do is we want to chop this image up. We want to chop it up so we can move things around, make it, you know, make it kind of look like this guy here, okay? Kind of make it look like this guy here. Of course, we didn't pull this other page two, but we're gonna we're gonna change it up just a little bit. So, but we'll we'll give you the idea of what we're doing here to make things a lot easier. So, what I want to do is I want to break this image up into components that I can move around. Okay, so it's super easy to do. All I have to do is go over here and move this up so I can I can see it. Now I kind of like the way this type is. Do you see how it's kind of curved? Because I, I don't know that it just it dates the, the the patent. I mean, come on, it was it was filed in 1964. We just had typewriters, and this is probably a 
it may have been a bad copy, but I, I kind of like the way this looks. So I'm going to take my select tool, I'm going to click and drag all around it, and I'm going to right click and select group. So now I have captured all this stuff and I can move it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here, I'm going to move, I'm going to grab, you know what, I'm going to move this around over here, the inventor's name and the attorney's names. So now I can go in and select my M16. And as you can see, these little curved arrows in here, if I hold my shift key, in fact, I can move it around however I want. But if I want to make it to where it's nice and straight, I hold my shift key down like so, and it's going to move it 45, 90, 180. All right, so now that's exactly where I want it. I can take my little inventor sign up. Oh, ah, hey, thought I grouped that dude. So group. All right. Make sure that I group. This isn't grouped either. You want to make sure that you group your images. So now these are grouped. So that way I can move them around. All right. Grouped, grouped. That was my fault. All right. Did I do the same thing for this? Uh, no, that one was grouped. Okay. So. You need, again, you need to make sure that you group all of your objects. So now, technically, we have three objects, right? We have our name, we have our gun, we have our uh, inventor slash attorneys. Again, you can have more objects kind of like this. If you wanted to go into page two and grab some of those, you could do that as well. But we are just going to deal with these three. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to move some of these items around. And now I am going to, let's say that I want to put it on a canvas, my 11 by 14 canvas, but I don't want to put it in portrait. I want to put it more of a landscape mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pseudo canvas here. So I'm going to do, let's see, yeah, so 11 by 14 is uh what's that two let's see it's 270 since we're going landscape that's 279 millimeters roughly and uh 355 millimeters on the uh, i don't want to draw another square i want to get rid of that i need to choose my select tool now now i've got my I've got all my objects here and I can place them the way I want to here. Let me go ahead and center my canvas that I'm going to put on my laser. And I'm going to move the attorney's name down, I'm going to move this down. And it's kind of like, well, Garrett, these, those guys are kind of small. Well, not to fret. Let's get everything lined up the way we want to get it lined up. In fact, I'm going to select these two objects. I'm going to go up here to my toolbar and I'm going to select align selected objects along their vertical centers. So watch what happens when I click. Everything kind of bloop, lines up. Okay, so these two objects, the title, the firearm are lined up. I'm going to take my attorney's and inventor's name and put it right there. Now I'm going to select all three of them. I'm going to group. Yes, you can group within groups. So now I've I've grouped I've grouped within groups. So now I've got one object that I can move around. So all I really have to do is select the object and make it larger. Remember, it is a vector graphic. I can make this whatever size I want to. And it's not going to lose any resolution. So check that out. That is nice and centered in that canvas. Now, if you look over here under the cut layers. I have the output set to null over here on this blue line, which means it is not going to burn on my canvas. Only the fill up here will do that. Now, you're probably curious about my speed. I Your mileage may vary. You may want to go check out my friend um, Jim video over on the Edge of Tech. He has a really cool video on how to look at different uh, colors when you're burning onto canvas. I'll put a link in the description below of my video. But I set my speed on this particular one to 6,000 
and a max power of 75%. This will burn this object in about, I believe it was, yeah, this says an hour. Um, the other one that I did was uh, around 35 to 40 minutes-ish. Okay guys, the next step in creating our wall art for our patent, our M16 patent, is you're going to need a canvas. So I went out to Dollar Tree, I found these 11 by 14 canvases for a buck. I mean, it was a two pack for $1. Uh, you should be able to pick something up like this in your local hobby, in your local hobby store or um, craft, uh, craft store. Uh, then you're gonna have to go back and paint them. I painted them with either black paint or dark blue paint. And it, it, again, that it, that's entirely up to you. I used Krylon, that seems to work the best. I use a technique that my buddy Jim Edgeworth uh, uses. He has a video over on YouTube from the Edge of Tech. And he, uh, the, the video is how to make money making wall art with a cheap desktop laser. And if you haven't seen this, this is his technique that he uses, is he coats the paint one way, and then he goes back over it again the other way, so you have a nice even coat all the way around. So that's exactly what I did with the black paint or the blue paint. Again, it was just one coat. I did not put an undercoat of white. It is just a single coat of black or blue. But again, you can choose any color that you like, you know, depending. Today's artwork was burned by the Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro Laser Engraver, provided by Made the Best, where everything is, well, made the best. Links in the description below, along with a discount code to save you some money. So the last step after burning your patent, you can see that there's a fine layer of dust that the laser has created from burning the paint. So you'll want to take a microfiber cloth that is damp and not wet, and you'll want to go up and down first and then side to side. So let's start cleaning this. And as you can see, there's some dust Quite a bit of dust, by the way. And as you can see, the letters are coming out a lot whiter. Yeah, look at all that. Again, I'm wiping just in one direction, just to make sure that all of the dust is off. And find, applying just a just a, a fair amount of pressure. And then I will want to go back. I'm going to flip my cloth over to where the it's still damp, but I'm going to go this way. All right. Now the final steps. I want to take my the other side of my cloth that is not damp. It is dry and I'll go through and just go through and wipe any little dust particles that may have, see there's really nothing on here so I'm just going through and wiping off everything. Awesome, there we go. The M16 patented February 22nd, 1966. Once again, thanks for joining us on today's episode of Learn and Burn here on the 3D Print Farm. If you haven't smashed that subscribe button, please do so. I have tons of tutorials and new products lined up for 2022, for 2022, that's hard to say, for 2022 on the 3D Print Farm. Have a great day and 
Happy New Year. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Yes, Santa has shaved off his beard. It's New Year's Eve. Time for some... Diggy. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to... You see what I have to deal with? 